Okay, good morning. Uh, last time we discussed the uh, phase modulation and the demodulation. Eh? And uh, and we discussed the, the, the modulation process. Uh, for narrow band, FM, the time domain modulated signal is uh, can be approximated by A times the cosine omega C T of minus K F times A T and times sine omega C T. Narrow band means uh, uh, K F times A T, the absolute value is much, much, much less than one. Eh? And for narrow band, Pm time domain signal which can be approximated by A times the cosine omega C T minus K P times the M T times the sine omega C T. Uh, narrow band means here uh, K P times the M T the absolute value must be much smaller than this one. So today we are going to discuss uh, how to implement this. Uh, we have two basic methods. First one is called the indirect method. Sec second one is the direct method. Indirect method of uh, Armstrong uh, and the direct method just uh, we implement an uh, oscillator. So the first one we discuss the indirect method. Indirect method Armstrong. Uh, step one we implement this narrow band implementation. Then the step two is to implement uh, uh, to extend to wide band uh, per, uh, modulation. Right. So first line is uh, uh, we can write here. Right. So we are given, for example, FM. How to implement? We are given this formula. How to implement this? So what we have is uh, uh, we have MT. So suppose we have MT here. Uh, this is the signal. The step one is we need to uh, look at this. This is the first term. <coughs> this one is just the, the carrier signal multiplied by constant. Right? So that's very simple. The second term is uh, some signal related to the input baseband information, then multiplied by a cosine, a uh, thin function. So this is a double sideband suppressed carrier process. Yes, uh, this baseband signal multiplied by a cosine or thin function. So this is modulated. Just multiply. Uh, then in between we just add up these two terms together. Right? So what we have is the first one, we are given this MT, then we use an uh, integrator, uh, and here we get uh, AT. AT. <laughs> That's the step one. That is for narrow band FM. Once we have AT, we need to multiply by this uh, thin function. So thin function here, we have an uh, uh, oscillator. So suppose this one. We oscillate as a cosine omega CT. Uh, we need to have this uh, uh, carrier signal. Then, this one here, we need to use a uh, negative 90 degree phase shift. Uh, then, this one will give us a uh, thin function. If we use a uh, This is not, uh, negative 90 degrees, uh, then we are going to get uh, a thin function. Thin on the CT. But what we have is negative here. Right? So if we have positive 90 degrees, then this will give us uh, a negative degrees. Right? Then we multiply by a KF. Right? So we have, have these two terms, and this here, two terms multiplied together. 
Uh, and we suppose we have a gain as kf. This is a multiplier. And we may want to use uh, just a As zero, we use a sub a multiplier. And we have a kf here. So this is uh, just a multiplier. It's a multiplier by k. So we have cosine shifted by positive 90 degrees because K, uh, we get the sine, negative sine omega CT. <laughs> then multiply by uh, AT, then with a constant. So this term gives us uh, uh, A times, uh, uh, there's A here, right? There's A here. So give us A times uh, negative KF AT times sine. Then this term, here, then we need to use a, a adder, add up together. So this part, this diagram will implement this uh, narrow band. So that's to us narrow band FF. So we just choose the appropriate uh, component that we can implement the narrow band. Right? Uh, for the second one, a narrow band PF how to implement this. And the easy way is you can compare this one with this one. What's the difference between these two? And they are similar. They need to have this term, both have this term, and multiply by same function. And the only difference here is this one is the AT, which is the integration of the baseband signal. And this one directly is MT. So that means this one is even simpler than this. And we don't need this integrator. So what we have is just the MT here, the given thing, we just use this. Uh, we can eliminate this term. We don't need this integrator. And here we have a cosine omega CT, and then with a positive 90 degree phase shift, and these two multiply together, give us a uh, then in this time we need to multiply by kp. Uh, and then there's a here, and this one, and add up the L. So this gives us a time domain narrow band uh, PF. <coughs> yes, so up there on the top one, the, the result of multiplying the negative sine omega CT and the AT is KF? Is uh, what do you mean? Oh, so you have KF over the arrow. KF means uh, this result uh, multiplied by KF because there's KF here. Okay. So this is the MT integration gives us AT, right? AT then times uh, A times uh, negative A uh, times A here, A negative time omega T, then we still have a constant KF. This KF you can uh, just multiply by KF means let's use the linear amplifier. Or you can just uh, set the gain here is KF, so okay. that doesn't matter. Right? So you can remove this one because KF is here. Right? Then add this A cosine omega CT. These two terms add up together give us this one. Right? Compared to this, this one is even simpler. We don't need this integrator. So directly MT and all others just copy. Okay? Questions on this? So these two diagrams implement the narrow band FM and the narrow band PM. But in general, for example, for wide band, how to do this? We just use a frequency multiplier. Right? We just extend these frequencies from narrow band to wide band. So that's uh, so as we have this narrow band here, uh, it's called a narrow band FM or narrow band PM, no matter which one. Then we just use the frequency multiplier. Okay. Frequency uh, multiplier. Then we get a narrow, uh, we get wide band. We have uh, this result. We get a wide band FM or wide band here.
Okay, any questions how to implement this uh, narrow band and wide band angle modulated uh, signals? Uh, that's called the indirect method. Uh, why? Because we use this approximation. How did we get this approximation? Remember last time, we used uh, all this identity to represent this uh, uh, modulated signal, then we just assume this is the narrow band means kf or kf times at or kk times mt very very small then we only take the first the two terms we eliminate uh, we ignore the other terms so we get this approximation so this is the indirect method so what is this at the bottom here? this one is a narrow band fm or a narrow band pm this is frequency multiplier frequency multiplier just means the, the increase of the frequency by several times. Usually we are going to have this kind of a, uh, device you just buy one and you can use it. Okay, now we have implemented the modulus uh, modulation process with the indirect method, you may ask, because we use approximation here, so what's the distortion? Is this, how accurate is this? Right? So now we are going to discuss this. Uh, we are going to discuss uh, the nature of uh, Armstrong method. So let's see how good is, uh, is this method. Huh? And we take FM as an example. So phi FM, and this one equal to, again, we go back to there. So A times cosine omega CT minus, uh, there's a phi uh, KF AT times sine omega CT. Right? This is the approximation. We only take the first two terms. And uh, we are going to write this one uh, with uh, do some uh, trigonometry, uh, combine these two ter terms. So that one will be equal to, uh, we said A cosine and uh, E times uh, cosine omega CT plus uh, another term. This A, this E here equal to there's one here, this one here. So that is a one plus kf times at square square, and take the square root. So this et e, e, e equals this one. Eh? And theta t, theta t will be equals uh, this coefficient divided by one. So this one will be equals uh, arc eh? tangent and the kf times at. We know this from trigonometry. We can combine two terms of a logical thing and another thing. We can uh, combine these two terms uh, into one uh, cosine function. Still remember this, right? Mm. Uh, no? Like, for example, 3 cosine uh, theta plus uh, 4 sine theta. Can we combine these two terms? Uh, this one will be equal to uh, 3 is here. Uh, 4 is here, 4 is here, so it's like this is 3, this is 4. So we are going to write this term. Right? This term will be equal to this is 3, this is 4, so this gives us 5. Right? 5, and we write only with one function, cosine, uh, no, no thing. So sine function here, then this theta here, uh, still here, and we need to plus this angle. This angle is tangent to this angle equals 4, negative 4 over 3. So this minus arc tangent and four over three. So like this. So we know this from trigonometry. And we just so this coefficient here equals one. This coefficient equals negative k for at. So coefficient square plus this coefficient square then take the square root. The three square plus four square take the square root equals five. That's how we get this. And this one, the angle is a uh, this one here divided by one, so we take this. Okay. 
Any questions? All right. So now we can see uh, we rewrite this. Right? So a times one plus k f squared a t squared take the square root then cosine omega c t uh, plus uh, tangent. I can use arc tangent or we can use just uh, uh, some use a tangent. Uh, some use a tangent negative one. So that's the same thing. Right? Inverse function. So then k f times a t. What we want? We want the FM signal. Right? And we use this indirect Armstrong method to approximate this. Now look at this compared to the ideal FM signal. What is the ideal FM signal? The ideal FM signal is A times the cosine omega C T plus K F times A T. Remember that? Right? This is the ideal. Compare this with the approximation. This one here, ideal we need the constant. But here, this one is not constant. Right? Although KF AT is very small, right? We said this narrow band. So this is small, but it's still not constant. Another one here, this omega CT, omega CT is the same. And this one here, this one here, right? it's a little bit different. So the good news is the frequency. Right? Let's compare this one. We want this one to be exactly as this. Now this is the arc tangent KL. So we want to compare these two terms. What happened? Is there any distortion in this term? We don't care about the amplitude. That is OK, right? But uh, the baseline information is supposed to be in this uh, here. But what we uh, suppose here, but what we have is this one. So we want to compare these two terms. Let's see, uh, to see what is the the, uh, the, the error. Right. So how to find this uh, frequency? Because this is the error. Huh? So frequency deviation. How to find the frequency deviation? So first one, we need to find the instantaneous frequency. You still remember how to find the frequency? Instantaneous frequency. We need to take the differentiation of the instantaneous phase. So this one will be d dt uh, multiplied by uh, of this term, cosine uh, omega ct plus uh, arc tangent kf of at. This one. Right? This are uh, instantaneous phase. We take the differentiation, we get the instantaneous frequency. Right? And the first term is this one, omega c. Okay, that is good. Same thing as this one. Then what is this? Uh, we know in math uh, 167, uh, differentiation. The differentiation of this arc tangent, inverse tangent, is uh, KF A differentiation here, then 1 minus a plus K squared A T squared. We just take the differentiation of this uh, inverse function, tangent function, and we get this one. What is AT? AT is the integration of the MT, right? So MT integration, then take differentiation. We get back the MT. So this one will be because omega c plus k m t uh, k f uh, then one minus uh, k plus k squared a t squared. Uh, this is differentiation of a is uh, m t because m t integration get a t a t differentiation get m t by uh, so it equals this. Okay, in this term, this one is what we want. 
the ideal term is just KF or MT. The frequency is just KF MT. So KF AT take differentiation is KF MT. This is what we want. But in the approximation, this is what we have. So what is the distortion? And keep in mind, this is narrow band, right? Narrow band that means k squared a squared is very small, because it's k a is small, so k squared a squared is even smaller. So what we this? What we have is a. Uh, so omega i equals omega c t then plus KF MT, this is on the top here, and this part is 1 minus 1 plus K squared A squared. We want to use a series to expand this. But remember that 1 over 1 plus X. If X is very small, what is this? This might be, for example, X equals 0, approaches 0. So this equals 1. So this is a zeroth order approximation. Yeah? So, for example, if that x is very, very small, it was uh, 1 out of 1 million. It just, okay, this one approximately equals 1. How does that give me more? Right? First of all, the appro approximation, you're going to minus x. Yeah? I want even more, more accurate. Okay, so then you add x squared and then 2 factorial. And, and so on. Right? Uh, so, here we just take the first term. So, that means x here equals k squared e squared. Right? So this one will be equal to all. the first term is this, then minus k squared b squared, then plus some other terms. Because k a is smaller, smaller than 1. So this square is even smaller. For example, if this one equals 1%, then this square equals 1, 0 0.001. And if this is cubed, then this one equals 1 out of 1 million. It's even smaller. So we just ignore all other terms. We only take, take the first term. So this one is what we want. But this, one is, this term is called the distortion. So KF MT is uh, this is good, this is what we want. And we have another term, KF MT minus, minus times K squared A squared. This one coefficient equals one, this coefficient equals this one. So we can see this one is much smaller than, than the one. But this term is called the distortion. Any questions on this? So we do have distortions, means it's not accurate in the indirect method of Armstrong. But if we set it for the condition, the Armstrong method means it's zero one. That means KF times AT must be very, very small. If this one is uh, this one set it for the condition, it's very, very small, then this distortion is very small. Uh, we have an example right, to show how small is this. Uh, the total modulation means uh, the baseband information itself equals uh, uh, a cosine function. Usually, this one has no practical usage. Uh, whose baseband information is just uh, a sinusoidal function? There's one way that, for example, the satellite can send out a, a beacon signal. Uh, in that case, that is uh, like this. Otherwise, for example, the baseband is our voice or something. We do not send just a single frequency sinusoidal function. Uh, that's usually very less, not, not important. Uh, but for example here, we just use this one. Uh, so M, your baseband information equals amplitude times the cosine omega mt. Uh, and we are going to find the AT equals uh, the integration of this one, so that will be R bar over omega M times the sine omega MT. Okay. The modulation index beta equals uh, R bar KF, uh, 
over omega m. So now we plug all this into this omega m, omega i. This omega i will be equal to beta omega m. Okay? We ignore the, the details. Right? So we just plug all this, uh, this one and this one into here. So this one will be equal to so cosine omega m t one minus beta squared and uh, sine squared omega m t. And we further simplify this one equals uh, beta omega m cosine omega m t then plus beta cube omega m over 4 and cosine 3 times omega m t. And here again, we use this one as smaller and smaller than one. And the modulation index must be very small. The reason is, again, this is never bad modulation. This part is what we want. Uh, this is good. This is a high frequency, because this is three times this frequency. This is called a high frequency distortion. And this part is, we don't want this. We want to quantize what's the value of this relative to this one. So how large is the distortion compared to the useful information? And if we divide this coefficient with this one, then that, that uh, relative spin is uh, just uh, the ratio is, see this term, or this term, omega m, omega m, and beta squared, uh, beta cubed, beta, so that's square, that's here. So that gives us a beta squared over 4. Uh, so this, this term divided by this term. Uh, beta cubed, beta, so we have beta squared, omega, omega m, cancel, and 4. So what does that mean? That means if the beta modulation index, for example, uh, equals 0.1, equals 10 percent, so this is narrow band. Uh, the beta is small. The frequency uh, deviation is small. Then we have distortion here. What is the distortion? The amplitude of the distortion compared to the useful information. Beta squared over four. So this one squared will be one percent. So this one gives us a, a quarter percent. So this is the ratio of quarter percent. Does this make sense? If we use a narrow band Armstrong, indirect Armstrong method approximation, we do have this caution here. But if we keep the condition set, the requirement satisfied, that means the Beta is small. For example, I take ten percent. Then the amplitude of the distortion will be equal to only like a, a quarter percent of the useful information. Right, so this is small. If you keep this even smaller, for example, this one equals a zero point zero one. Then this one will be equal to uh, zero point two four and then there are four zeros. Before that, uh, so that's the even small, so can be can be ignored. Uh, so when you use this indirect method, you keep in mind we need to satisfy the condition. That means kf times at, uh, kf times uh, <coughs> or kp times mt must be very small compared to one. Okay, any questions? The last one. Is that on the right side? This a, one? Is that over X or are you saying that it, that is X? This, is, this one means we do not need this okay, one. Okay. This one is the, what we want. See, the baseband information is, we said, is alpha times the cosine omega. This is our baseband information. And after the demodulation, we do have this term, but look at this one. We have a high frequency. This is called a high frequency, high frequency distortion. Uh, this is three times the frequency. And this term is not what we want. 
And the uh, good news is uh, this term is very small compared to this one, if beta is very small. Right? Okay, any further questions on that? Now we're done with the indirect implementation of the FM and PM uh, modeling. The next method is uh, a direct method. Direct method, how to generate a oscillating frequency. Oscillator, right? Okay. What oscillator we know before? For example, I led you to change to make an oscillator. What is your idea how to make an oscillator? Anyone still remember that? Operation of power. Right. The simplest oscillator is uh, the oscillating frequency is uh, let's use the LC circuit. Uh, what we have is uh, we have this one, L, this is the C, then this is the oscillating frequency. Right. Uh, if the frequency equals very high, then the output will be equal to zero. If the frequency is very low, it's also equal to zero. Right? So this is the oscillator. And the oscillating frequency is L times C, then take the square root of one of this. And in frequency modulation, the baseband information is in the frequency. So if we can control this oscillating frequency with the baseband information, then everything is done. That is the basic idea of direct method of FM modulation. Okay. Now, if we want to control this frequency, this is constant. Uh, we can control this L, we can control this C uh, with this MT. Uh, so do you know any method? I uh, suppose this one is the oscillator. You know there's a Inductance here. This, this, sorry, this is the inductor. Uh, we have we have inductance here. Can you control the inductance with some uh, external, for example, signal? Suppose this one is our MT signal. If we change this one, this uh, inductance will change. Is this? Uh, do you know this idea before? You already said this error is constant. Right? So this one. Usually has no practical application. This one is not one. So that means this error usually is cannot be controlled by external voltage. Okay? This error is constant. But uh, this one here, this C will change, can be changed. Right? So the correct uh, notation is uh, so this one is a C. We know there's a capacitance here. But we are going to have an external terminal, the third one. This one, if we apply, for example, a voltage here, this voltage can be changed, a variable voltage, and this voltage will control the value of the capacitance. You change this voltage, then this one will change. And this is called a director, and not capacitor, it's a variable, I mean, variable capacitor, so, but anyway, it's called a director. So we can control this C with the MT. That is the idea. Right? So when you implement this, you can easily to buy a vector, and there's a third terminal. You can apply our MT to the third terminal, and that external voltage will control the, the capacitance. So then yeah, this capacitance will change with respect to the MT. If this change with, uh, with respect to MT, that means this omega will change with respect to MT. Then we implemented the FM modulation. Right. So the C, first one is C0. Huh? Without any external voltage, the capacitance will be equal to the original capacitance. Then it will change with the uh, external voltage. Right? Again, this K is something like sensitivity. This change, then this one will change. If there's no this signal, then that's value just equals C. 
is zero. And we plug this one into here, so omega will be equal to L times C, this, and we just plug into numbers, L C0 minus KMT, and take the square root of this, and we move LC outside, this, and in this part, we are going to have Y minus KM over C0, and take the square root, then y inverse. So this one will be equal to like this. You say this LC? This one? Yeah. LC0. So that's C0. Uh, C0 means uh, the capacitance without any external voltage. And see, C equals as a function of time. This one equals this one minus this. If this MT equals 0, then that's CT equals 0. Does that make sense? We are like this here, and we have external, uh, external third uh, terminal here. So this one connected to your uh, MT. If this one is not here, then this C will be equal to C0. If this one is here, then this one will be minus K MT. And, uh, all this process is trying to evaluate how large the frequency deviation is. Because in FM, we want to, the frequency deviation is controlled by the baseband information, by MT. So we want to see how this MT can control the frequency deviation. Right? Again, we assume this one is small, so we can see we use a lot of this uh, series expansion. Right? And this one will be equal to LC0. And uh, suppose this is small, huh? let me ask you, suppose this is small, y minus x, f is small, half this one, what is this? Approximately equal to, if this x is small, to the power of, uh, first one is so small that x equals zero, what do we have here? One, okay, that's the first term. That's the, your first approximation. It's called the zero order approximation. Then, so, okay, more accurate, you're going to take another. So this one will be equal to this times uh, this one. Right? So this one will be equal to negative one times negative half, which equals half, half x. Right? Right? Does that make sense? For example, what is 0 0.99 squared value of this one? What is this? Right? So first I said this equals 1, approximately. And it's more accurate. So you are going to plus this one compared to this 0.01 over 2. So this one is 1.005. This one is much better than this one because we have a first order approximation here. If you use your calculator to calculate this, I believe this one will be very close to this one, closer to this than one. Eh? Then if you want more, you can add the second order approximation. But here, we take only the first one. Eh? That's much better than the zeroth order. Mm -hmm. All right, so this will be plus 2C, this one KMT. And the KM, T is this one. Eh? Over C0, we call this one delta C, the change of the capacitance. So KMT, we call this one delta C. Eh? And this one will be equal to, eh? uh, and what is this? This is the original oscillating frequency. Eh? Omega equals this one, so this is C here, and this one will have zero here. That means uh, if the MT does not exist, this oscillating frequency equals this one. So we move this one to here, so we have omega eh, minus omega zero, eh, and uh, no, so omega. And there's one here, so we subtract, uh, we use uh, this delta, and we minus this, and this is omega zero here will be equal to. Uh, and there's two here, move this two to, to the front, 
and this one will be equals to delta C plus C. I'm just uh, up to this point, we just do some math, you get this. So what does that mean? Uh, if you move this term to here, it's to, to half of here. If this uh, vector, the change of the capacitance, the relative change of the capacitance, then times half, that will be equal to uh, the frequency deviation. Did they make sense? I'll give you some numbers. For example, the original C equals, uh, let me mix, make, make up some numbers. For example, equals uh, 1 mu, suppose, right? Then, after you apply this MT, this mu will change, this, this C will be between, for example, 0 0.9 to 1.1 mu, right? Because the capacitance will change. And the minimum equals uh, 0.9, the maximum equals uh, 1.1. Does it make sense to you? Right, so that's like 10%. So what we want is, uh, what is the oscillating frequency? That's deviation. Come here. Suppose this one give us, uh, uh, this one equals, uh, for example, equals 1 megahertz. Uh, combined with this error, your error times C, take the square root of 1 over this one, suppose equals 1 megahertz. Then what is this uh, delta omega? How this frequency will, will deviate? Right. So this relative change in the capacitance divided by 2 equals this one. What is the change of uh, capacitance? C is from 0.9 to 1.1. So that means delta C equals uh, 0.1, right? The change of 0.1. 0.1 over oh, this one equals 10%. 10% divided by 2 means equals uh, 5%. So that means the frequency deviation here equals 5%. 5% means compared to this one. So the maximum frequency will be equal to, so okay, this frequency will be equal to from where to where. The minimum frequency will be equal to 9, yeah. 9, 5, k, okay. right? 2, 1, 0, 0, 5. Oh, it's uh, point this one meg, uh, one point this one meg. So you can see this uh, capacitance changed by 10%, but the frequency deviation here only 5%, because half of this. The example gives us uh, if you want to, because when you design uh, FM system, you want to know, uh, you want your frequency deviation to be controlled by yourself. For example, I want the maximum frequency deviation like 10% or 20%. Right? Then you can choose the correct vector to control this uh, frequency deviation. Okay? Uh, any questions on this? We reviewed the narrow band. FM and the PM module uh, time domain signal from last time. Then from these two formulas, we implemented with diagram the narrow band, the indirect Armstrong implementation. And uh, after that, we use a frequency multiplier. We can implement a wide band FM or PM. So that is the indirect method. Right? Direct, uh, and we also discussed the the distortion, because this is indirect, means approximation, so we must have some distortion. And we discussed the distortion is related to, so the relative strength of distortion is just beta squared over 4. So when you design this scheme, and you want to use this diagram, indirect method to implement this one, you want to keep this one to be as small as possible. If your, this beta is not small, then this one gives you more distortion, so you need to reconsider your ideas to use this one. So this is one method to design the circuit. The next one is uh, use the direct method. I uh, use this uh, vector, uh, which is controlled by the baseband information, baseband signal, then to build an uh, oscillator. And in this way, you need to know, uh, determine the frequency division you want, then choose the correct vector, the parameters, then you can get this, what you want, the, the modulation index.
Okay, so that's what we have so far. Any questions? We finished the modulation process. The next one will be a demodulation. Right? What is the demodulation? What do we want in the demodulation process? We want the the baseband. the baseband information, right? Okay, we take an example, we take an FMS example. Where is the baseband information in the FM signal? In the frequency, right? So that's the FM. In the PM, it is in the phase. Okay, we use the FMS example. The baseband information is in the frequency, and now we want it. So how to get this information? Huh? You think any, you tell me your ideas. How to get the information from of the baseband from the frequency? Yes, demodulate. That means how to demodulate that. We know, uh, this, this is called demodulation process. We want the baseband information from the frequency. So how to get this? For example, I'll give you a hint. If I can measure the frequency of your FM signal, do I know the M, uh, MT? Uh, you give me the FM signal, huh? F, FM, uh, which equals A times the cosine omega CT plus KFAT, right? or times KP MT. Uh, that's the in, in, in here. This is what I want. How do I get this? I said, if you give me this information, if I can tell you the instantaneous frequency, then I minus this omega C, that gives us a some term relative to this value. So if I can mirror this for every time, then I know the baseband information. Is this good? So that means if you give me a frequency counter, how to measure the frequency, a frequency counter, right? then I can get this. So that, yes, that is one way to demodulate this. Now you give me your baseband uh, FM signal, I use this frequency counter, I measure the frequency for every time instant, then I know the MT for every time instant. That is one way. Right? But, uh, we can do this in, in the lab, but when you measure the frequency, you need some time, right? It's one second, one minute, one minute. So you cannot measure this very fast. So we have better ways to do this, right? Any other ideas? All right, let's discuss the transfer function. Right? The frequency response. I believe you know this from a 3 level. Right? So for example, I give you a network, a system, and you are going to draw the frequency response. And I still can remember what the frequency response looks like. This one here is a frequency, right? Oh, yes. Okay. So this one here is a, the amplitude or the gain which is a function of frequency. For example, if it is an ideal low-pass filter, what does this look like? Just like this, right? What we call this one is called a cutoff frequency. That means that for any signals with a higher frequency than omega C, we don't have any gain. That means the gain equals zero. So that means the gain, A, is defined by the output voltage Huh? which is also a function for omega divided by the input voltage, which is also a function of frequency. So if A equals zero for this one, then this one, there's no output, it's all totally cut off. Huh? But for any signal between this passing band, inside this passing band, again, equals one. So everything passes, the output equals input. Huh? 
So this is the ideal low-pass filter. Right? For practical low-pass filter, it looks like a, like this, right? And we have a 3 dB bandwidth. This is one, so 3 dB means a, what's the 3 dB? We mentioned this at the very beginning. 3 dB, we are talking about power, right? 3 dB means 0 0.707, right? right? So this is one, and if this one equals 0 0.7, then the power at this point is a half over here. So that is a half, right? you know, 3 dB. But then this part is called the cutoff frequency. Although we still have some signals passed for higher frequency, but that power is the same, so we just ignore that. This <laughs> Would that be the other shoot? The other part has to have more. This one? No, the, the part, the small triangle on the far right. This one? Yeah, the shoot. This one, we assume this one, as the signal is gone. Cut off by the low pass filter. Because this is the frequency is higher than the cut off frequency. Right? For low, this is for low pass. For band pass, it's like this, right? For high pass, like this one. Make sense? Right. Suppose we have a frequency response look like this. Right? Ideally, it's a straight line, right? So the A equals a constant slope times the omega. Suppose it like this. For the same input signal, suppose the input signal equals 1, it equals a constant. Look at this. Can I claim the higher the frequency, the higher the output? Because we, for all the signal, we keep the input amplitude the same. We assume it equals 1 or equals 8, it doesn't matter, right? Scale is 1. So that means the output will be equal to the gain times the input, which equals 1. For all the input, no matter what the frequency is, this gain, this amplitude always equals 1. Right? So that means the output will be equal to A times the input, which equals 1. So just output the amplitude right, will be equal to the A. And we assume A equals uh, linearly increases with the omega. The larger the frequency, the larger the A. So that's why A will be equal to K times the omega. So what does that mean? Right? I'll give you a hint. Suppose this one here, omega equals a, this one equals 100, uh, this one equals a 200, and this one equals 10, this one equals a 20, suppose. Uh, make some. And for input equals uh, m to the 10 cosine 100 t. If this output, this is the input. If we have output equals uh, 2 volt, suppose. And we have another input, this is 1, this is 2. And the amplitude is still the same. I said 1 here. We can say A, okay? So then, and this one is 200 T, the frequency changes from 100 to 200. And what is the output? What is this? 4, right? All right, all right. Why? Because we know this will be A, we owe equals the input times the gain. All the inputs are the same. We assume the same. Equals 1, or equals 10, or equals 100, doesn't matter. And so this one is proportional to A. And for A, when omega equals 10, that's equals 10. So that's gain equals 10. So after multiply by 10, suppose we get 2. And in this case, we have 20, so increases double. So this one must be double. Does that make sense? Okay, now everybody understand clear with this idea, right? So if I have a system like this, the frequency response gives us this one. Can I use this one to demodulate of FMC? If I give you a circuit, eh, the frequency response 
can be characterized by this one. And the larger the frequency, the larger the output or the gain. Can you use this one to demodulate the FM signal? Yes, right? Why? Because the larger the frequency, the larger the output. For FM signal, the baseband information is in the frequency. So if the frequency is larger, this one is MT. If your baseband is larger, then your frequency will be larger. Then your output here will be larger. So MT, if it's large, right, then you get a large V output of your system. If you have a small MT, MT is small, AT is small, that means uh, this output is small, so we have a small output. Does it make sense? Okay, so now look at this one. Small MT, you get small output. Large MT, you get large output. What does that mean? That means this output is our modulated signal. Does it make, make sense? Right. So if we have this kind of circuit, then your FM, suppose this is your circuit, right? satisfy this condition. This is your FM, then you pass through this, what you have is just MT. Because when the MT is larger, right? this uh, frequency will be large, right? this output will be large. Okay? If the frequency is small, your MT is small, your frequency is small, then output is small. So this one actually is the baseline here. Right, so that is our theory. So any, this one is a, a special one, right? and we have any system, so a straight line, straight line like this, not necessarily pass through this origin, like this one, or like this one, any straight line. Any system whose frequency response satisfies this uh, linear relationship can be used for FM demodulation. So that is our conclusion. So everybody agree with this? Before we find one example that we actually use it to see if this is correct. Uh, this is a theory. Yes, it looks like correct. Right? Okay, next one is uh, what system give us a uh, uh, transfer function, frequency response satisfy this condition. We know this from, uh, I mentioned this in 323. Everybody is taking 323, right? No? Who have taken 323? No. No, okay. A differentiator, remember this. Huh? Suppose you have an input is, uh, so x vi equals a times e to the j omega t. So suppose our input signal is this. Then the d dt, the differentiation of vi, what is this? So a times j omega e to the j omega t, right? This differentiation is just j omega move to the front, j omega a, this one, right? Right. So what is this? This is j omega a times this one equals x input. So what does that mean? That means this dt is equivalent to j omega. Right. So you differentiate a signal in time domain that is looks like in frequency domain, you just multiply by j and omega. So what is this? This is the output, this is the input. So this is the transfer function, this is the a. Uh, a is uh, just differentiation, and this is equal to j omega. Uh, so what is A? Yeah. What's the amplitude? Uh, this is omega. Uh, this is the frequency response, amplitude response, equals omega. Does this satisfy our condition? Yes, that's even uh, better. Why? Because this is plus zero times one. Uh, so the slope equals one, the y-intercept equals zero. So in this case, just the A equals omega. The larger the frequency, the larger the gain, or the larger the output. So that means differentiator can be used for FM demodulation. 
So that's the all up to here we argue the theory. Right? We propose this one, we found that any system satisfies this transfer function frequency response looks like can be used for FM demodulation. And based on our experience, we know differentiator is a frequency response is just the omega. So satisfy our requirement. So our conclusion is that we can use the differentiator to demodulate IFM signal. Any questions so far? Okay. So now you go to your lab, okay. give you an FM modulated signal, then you pass through a differentiator. We assume, we expect, we can get the MM, MT. That is what we assume. Okay. Now the question is, are you sure this is true? Uh, before we go to the lab, we still need want to to verify this is true in theory. Okay. The time domain FM signal. Anyone remember this? What is this? The ideal FM signal. What is it? A E times cosine. Omega C T plus K F, K -F times, A. times A T or so the integration as uh, M T, M T, E T, right? Times A T for simplicity, right? Still remember this? If you forget this, right? You know midterm is midterm test is uh, like a very small, right? So review this, right? Now we said the different iter will give us the baseline information. So d dt are for this signal. Let's see what we have. This is like this one passed through this. This is the differentiation, and we want to know what is here. That is the input. This is the output. So what is this? Anybody tell me? <coughs> this is the FM modulated signal as the input to the differentiator. What is the output? Just differentiation. What is it? This one equals A, right? Constant here, cosine function differentiator give us a what? Uh, negative sine function. Okay, negative sine function. Fine, copy everything here. Omega C T plus K F, and this we we write A T here. Right? So negative sine function. And inside here we still need to do the. This is called the water rule. Chain rule, yes. All right. So it differentiates this. So that might be the omega c plus plus what? Kf mt integrate differentiate. What is it? Mt, right? Okay. So plus uh, Kf mt. All right. This is what we have after the differentiation. Okay, now let's recall what we want. This process is for demodulation. So what do we want? We want MT. Right? So now look at this output. Where is the MT? This one here and this one here. Right? This one is something MT integration. So we have two information, two places that have the information of this one. The original FM signal we have only here. The information is only here, not in the amplitude because the amplitude is constant. But after the differentiation, we have the information here again in the frequency. That's no problem. And we just also have the baseband information in the amplitude. We need only one, right? So now tell me how to get this based on what we learned so far. This one is what we want. How to get this? What technique are you going to use? A filter. Filter. 
how to filter. We want this one, right? So this is the signal. Something like that, right? This signal and there's a there's a somewhere like a amplitude. I want this one. Anyone tell me correctly? Get half point. The first one. What technique are you going to use to to get this information? Let me give you a hint. Where is the information? Here, right? What is here? Amplitude. Anyone? First one? Huh? What is it? Multiplied by... You just tell me the, 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 the term, right? the technique. You don't need to tell me how to do it. So the information is here, amplitude. That is what I want. How are I going to do it? Shift. Armstrong. Armstrong shift. No. Shift. Armstrong. No. Multiply. Multiply what? By uh, sine. Sine function. Okay, you are correct. But the right way I want to. If you are giving a blank to feel, I want to use the AM demodulation. Right? That is what I want, because this is the AM. I said, what, where is this? You said amplitude. Yeah, you are correct. I want the information from the amplitude. So what technique are you going to use? It's called the M AM demodulation. So that is like a, this one times the MT. How to get this MT? This is AM demodulation. Uh, you said, okay, I can multiply by cosine function. Yes, that is the multiplier method, right? So that is one way. In general, this is the AM demodulation. So that is one way. Otherwise, for this AM, the most, the simplest. Which one? What is it? Low pass. Huh? Low pass. Oh, no, fine. Shift. No. Oh, shift. Shift. You said, you mentioned it. So no. You get it correct, you use the multiply by cosine function. Yes, that is true. That's a multiply. Always, we mentioned this. And this why we said that one is very important to be. Hello? Anyone? How point? Okay. You forget. Okay, sorry. How point is gone. Okay. Or if you can draw the, the, that thing to me, yeah. also work. Huh? Huh? What are you asking for? Like the envelope detector? Maybe? Yeah, that is it. Envelope detector, right? Because this is in the envelope. So we just use envelope detector. Does that make sense? So, you get the half point, right? Uh, what is envelope detector? So, How many components? Three. Three. The first one is uh, this, then, uh, resistor, then what else? Conventional like this, right? That makes sense? So this one is the envelope detector. Before that, we need to use a differentiator. So before that, we use a differentiator and pass through this. This one is the FM signal. Right? So that is the process of how we do this. Differenti uh, FM signal, differentiator, pass through the envelope detector, or in your way, you just multiply by with the cosine function, but it's more complicated. This one is easier. So this one here gives us empty. Any questions on this? For this modulation, Demodulation is a differentiator. We have an assumption here. Our method here means uh, this A is a constant, right? <coughs> See? Mm -hmm. 
I did this math like this. That means A is constant, so I can move E outside. How about if A is not constant? This FM signal, this is ideal. When you receive that signal, for example, in your car, because of the rain, thunderstorm, or something like that, okay, reflections, diffractions, a lot of things, the amplitude no longer a constant. So that means A is a function of time. Does this still work if A is not constant? Right? If A is not constant, now we do this. Right? So this one is A is not constant, not equal to constant. We do this uh, differentiation. So we, we are going to have dA dt. Right? This one is the function of time, right? So dA dt then times the cosine omega ct plus kf at. We have this extra term, then plus we have this one. If it is constant, then this one equals zero, then we get this one. Perfect. If it is not constant, we have this term. And this one will give us a lot of distortion, right? So how to do this? Is this distortion serious or not? So for example, if your FM signal is supposed to be like this, but it's not, eh? something like, like this one. We know the information is still in the frequency, and I want this one to be a constant, but in real life, this one is not constant. If I pass this real signal into through this differentiator, do I still get the correct result? If not, then what should we do? Right? We cannot get the correct result, but we have a way to overcome this. Yeah? And we can cut all this one here to make it constant. Yeah? So what circuit can be used to cut off this uh, high voltage or low voltage? We keep this everything constant. Band pass, band pass can only change the amplitude, uh, sorry, change the frequency. Right? This one, I want to make your amplitude the uniform. Any device can be used to do this. Your, circuit, your amplitude is changed a lot, but the output is uniform. Wasn't there some kind of uniform cutoff circuit? Yes, cutoff circuit. What we do this? Anyone knows this? I'll give you a hint, okay? For example, this diode. This you already use it for, for protect your circuit, right? For example, if like this one, if you have this here, and you apply it to your, for example, your load here, uh, I don't know what this is, but your load. This one is very sensitive. If this broken amplitude is very high, then this one will be destroyed. Yeah. So, for example, you want this this amplitude always less than 0 0.7, right? If it's higher than 0.7, this one is, is gone. So, how are you going to protect your expensive device? You do not, but this signal can be, the amplitude can be larger than 0 0.7. For example, noise, huh? Ex external noise, this one you cannot control. So the amplitude can be larger than this one, but what you want is for this one, the frequency, the amplitude can never exceed 0.7. So what are you going to, what's, how can you design the circuit to protect this one? You can put the diode? You can put the diode in parallel. Like this one, right? Why? Because uh, when this conduct, this one, the, the point is for 0.7. So for example, if this, what it equals one. This one will conduct, right? Yeah. Conduct, then this one the maximum equals just 0 0.7. So this one means this output can never exceed 0 0.7. If this one equals 0 0.5, then means this cannot conduct. Then this one just 0 0.5, so this works here. So this is the open. So this circuit will limit your amplitude to 0 0.7. We have some others. It's called a hard limit. This one is, is called hard limit. Right? Once your amplitude is, uh, uh, is larger than some amplitude, I just cut off. Like this. So this one is 0 0.7, this one is 1. Then after, the, after this circuit, everything, the maximum is 0 0.7. So it's called hard limit. Okay? So we can use this idea 
and we can use this circuit, pass this signal through this circuit, then everything is a constant. Does that make sense? So if your amplitude is no longer a constant, you pass through a hard limit, yeah, like this. Then you get everything constant. The hard limit, I give us a distortion again. <coughs> so we want to, di to discuss if this one, how large is the distortion? What is the hard limit? The hard limit, look at this. If this one is good, then like this. If this one pass, just pass this part, right? So if you look at this, looks like this uh, hard limit is just uh, a rectangle pulse train, right? So you just original MT, this A times this uh, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, and the empty equals 1, just cut this one. So that is the idea. So if you have A, then you times, so this signal, a times the cosine omega c t uh, plus k f times uh, a t here, then times the hard limit, which is uh, what? We use this first time, second time, or maybe this at least the third time. The hard limit is what? One zero, one zero, one zero. What is it? In your eyes, what is that? One zero, one zero, one zero. Horse train, train. Yeah, rectangle horse train. Now, what is. I do not want to write 1, 0, 1, 0, 1. Zero. What is it mathematically? Recall the first homework. I'll let you practice, let you draw that thing. What is it? That is a series of uh, cosine functions. Make sense? Mm -hmm. So you have, for example, to the circle equal 50%. You have a DC. You have one third of a right, part somewhere, right, cosine omega t, then minus uh, one third cosine omega, three omega t like this. So this is the question. We use this a lot of time, right? right. Then you find this one times this, right? we get the same thing. Right. If, if you do this math, you find that this hard limiter does give us some distortions, but we can use a band pass filter to cut off the distortions, and we get the correct thing. Right? So the conclusion is, if your amplitude is not constant, you need to pass your FM signal through a hard limiter and a band pass filter. Then everything is perfect. Any questions on this? Okay, next one. We are going to discuss uh, some other method to form demodulation. Okay. Uh, the first one is called uh, all these are practical. And then, yes, you can do this. Uh, you can do this in your lab, so you, can, you can talk. Huh? The first one is called a slow detector. What is the first word? Practical? Practical, yeah. Practical, huh? that means Slope detector. Anyone knows this? Three eleven or something. I don't know which class. It. Have you discussed the circuit? Uh, huh? Slope detector. Differentiator. Huh? Differentiator. Differentiator. Right. Right. Differentiator gives us the slope, right? A slope detector means uh, if you have a signal like this, right, it will detect the slope. The slope. Right. Differentiator is a slope. Is yeah, slope detector, right? Because at this point the, the the slope is large, so the differentiation is large. And this one here the output equals zero because the slope equals zero. Right? At this point the slope is uh, is large but it's in negative way, so the output will be negative. But anyway, yes, correct, perfect, right? So uh, differentiator is slow. 
uh, is slope detected. Right? But we have uh, other right? practical means easier. Right? We have easier to do this. What is the suppose we have a frequency response look like this? What system, what circuit give us a frequency response like this? I mean, this is uh, the output. What circuit give us frequency response like this? Okay. It's an oscillator, right? The oscillator means uh, like an LC circuit. This one here is the oscillating frequency. So it's omega 0 equals 1 over LC. For higher frequency, then cut off. Lower frequency cut off only like this one. Make sense? This is the frequency response for uh, oscillator. Right? Now, if in this uh, FM, we know that line right, equals A times cos A omega C T plus K L times A T. Right? So there's some frequency here. If I keep the maximum frequency, so the maximum frequency is K F times A T. So I took the maximum of this. Right? The max is less than this one here. That means all the frequency is between this range. So you need to design a circuit. If you know this FM signal, you know the maximum frequency, the maximum deviation, right? So suppose that equals 200K. Okay. Then when you design this oscillator, you need to make the, this oscillating frequency larger than 200K. For example, 250. So this one is 250, but the maximum here equals only 200. So you make sure all this spectrum is at this slope, this side. Does it make sense? Then look at this. If your frequency is large, your output will be large. If your frequency is small, then your output will be small. So that, that's it. You use this one, oscillator, as a demodulator. Does it make sense? But you need to keep this design. Is this one oscillating frequency must be larger than the maximum here. Right? So the circuit will be like this. I use this, I use this, I use this one here, this is the transformer, right? This is your input FM, uh, FM modulated signal, so this is free FM, that is this signal, here, right? And you pass through here, this is L, this is L, right? This is the C, and I choose the correct C to make sure this condition is satisfied. That means the frequency all here must be on the left hand side of the peak value. Right. So now suppose this one has a frequency like this. Right. Suppose this one is your FM signal. So we can see the frequency changes. What is your output at this point? Right, so I'll, I'll redraw this, right? Okay, suppose like this one. This signal is just equal to this, right? For this signal, where is the output here? That will be, uh, look like this low frequency, right? Low frequency is here, so the output will be small, right? So that one will be like this. At this point, frequency is very high, right? Frequency very high, but still before this. So high here, so that means this output is low. So it will look like. Then, smaller, smaller, okay. So this one is even smaller, even smaller than this one. So it will be like this. Then it looks like this frequency will go back to it. So the output at this point here is, is this one. So this one is the demodulated from this. That is empty. Does that make sense? So again, when you design this circuit, you need to know what is the maximum frequency in the FM signal, then you need to make sure this one, this one is larger than the maximum frequency. Another way is, uh, how about I use this side? That means the larger the frequency, the smaller the signal. The smaller the frequency, the larger the signal. Does this work? Yes, it works. 
but it's just opposite to your to your signal. So if you can design to make this work, this one here also good. Uh, but the only difference is uh, for this small frequency, the output is large, right? The output is large. Then for this large frequency, the frequency is, uh, the output is small. So like this. So this is just opposite. If you have an inverter, right, you just change the polarity, then you get this. But no matter which one you use, both works. But you need to make sure the maximum frequency must be larger than all the frequency or smaller than all the frequency. Yeah. Any question on this one? So this is very interesting, right? So you can easily design this kind of circuit then you can design it. Uh, the next is uh, zero crossing. Uh, this envelope detection. The next one is called a zero crossing. Zero crossing detection. Uh, again, we have uh, some device you can buy uh, from, the, from the market. Zero crossing. What does that mean? That means it will detect uh, the time that cross the zero. So if the signal from here, from negative to pass zero to negative, it will give you a signal. And pass from positive to negative, and pass zero, give you another signal. So that is like a frequency counter, just count the frequency. Right? So every time the signal pass through the zero, it will give you an output. So this is a zero crossing detector. Now this will give you also, if the Frequency is large, that means it is past the zero more frequently. Right? So the output will be large. If the frequency is small, that means it's past zero less frequently, so the output will be small. So this circuit can also be used for FM demodulation. The last one is uh, uh, physical lock and loop. Physical lock loop. And uh, we don't discuss the details of how to implement this. This is very, very useful. Huh? When this was invented, it's very expensive. It can only uh, like use it for a military or something. Now, this one is used everywhere. For example, your, your radio, car radio or even your mini radio, huh? portable radio, ever use this uh, uh, first lock loop. Right? And uh, we don't have uh, the time to discuss this one. Uh, this one, the, the technical details of this circuit, the circuit is not discussed in this class, it's in 2015. Uh, but uh, we just mentioned this one. This log rule, PLL, can be used for demodulation for uh, FM signals. Right? Okay, that's it for, for today. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm.